Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is freedom. Freedom. If you're watching daily, July 4th, a day we celebrate freedom as a nation. And, you know, as much as wrong with this nation, you know, we can still look across this world and be thankful that we live where we do. Now, having said that, spiritual freedom we know was not purchased uh, by soldiers. Our spiritual freedom was purchased by Jesus himself. Now, with that, as we're coming today to Matthew chapter 13, there's a lot of parables here, uh, kind of back to back, a lot dealing with the kingdom of God. And as always, I encourage you to go back and read all this, even if you need to pause this and go read all of it leading up to verses 51 and 52, because that's the part we're going to look at today. But you need to kind of see all the other parables leading up to it, what the kingdom of heaven is like. And, and even how him sharing the word, you know, you have the parable of the sower and, and how the seed falls on different grounds and, and then the, the wheats and the tares and the dragnet. And there's, there's so much here. But he gets to the end and he asks them a question. And I'm going to show you where I believe freedom, how we're going to tie in freedom for that today. Uh, so verses 51 and 52, Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now, one, the reason that he's comparing them to scribes, and it would be like being students of the scriptures and students of the Old Testament. And now not only do they have the Old Testament truths to pull from, but now they, they don't even realize that they're in the New Testament truths. They're right smack in the middle of it. And, and so even though we look back and we say, hey, okay, this is you know the beginning of the New Testament, they were living it. And so they were just getting the, the word. They were just getting these parables and these uh, comparisons from God. But the kingdom of heaven is not something that was uh, you know completely hidden in the Old Testament. It was plenty looking ahead, plenty talking about heaven, plenty talking about God and his rule and his reign and, and all the things that were coming about the Messiah. The thing that was really hidden in the Old Testament was you know, obviously the identity of Jesus. But you knew it was going to come through the line of David and you knew um, you knew so many things about him coming from Bethlehem and, and that he would be called a Nazarene and he would do all these things as we've seen over and over fulfilling the scripture. But the, the other part of that is, you know, the church is the thing that was really hidden that's now revealed in the New Testament. But having said all that, Jesus is asking him, says, do you understand all these things? Do you understand all these comparisons I just gave you? Now, I can imagine that the, they just sat around and they're like, oh, of course, of course. Now, I don't think they told him that they understood when they didn't, but I believe they understood the maybe as some would say, maybe superficially they understood just the same way that you and I do. Oh, yes, we understand that, you know, God is going to sort out everything at the end. Take the wheat and the tares. We understand that, yes, he, he's not going to just pull out all the wicked right now because it could uproot some of the righteous. So he says, well, I'm going to wait until the end and, and we're going to get it all straightened out then. Now, we can kind of understand that on the surface. But then the more we dive in, sometimes we get even a little bit more confused the further we dive in. But the fact that he says, have you understand? They say, yes. He says, well, then as scribes, and, and what he's saying, as you are learning, now he compares them. He gives even another parable and says, well, it's just the same that you're in part of that. And now as you have been taught and you have learned, you've already learned the old things. Now you're learning new things. And you're like this homeowner that's bringing things out of his storeroom. He's bringing new things out and he, he brings the old things out. You know, you can almost imagine, uh, you know, imagine like a, a yard sale, you know, go to an antique shop, man, you got some really old stuff and you got some really brand new stuff. And there's things that are treasures there, both new and old. And he says, that's what you're like. You're bringing these things out and, and, and it's beautiful. But let me ask you this. What's the point? of having old truths and new truths if you keep it to yourself. 
See, that's where I wanted to tie in freedom today, because, you know, even as we think about our nation being founded on, uh, you know, looking for religious freedom, it was the religious freedom to go out and share the good news of the gospel. And today we have that freedom in this nation to go out and share the good news of the gospel. But yet we don't do it. Now, if we're to be like scribes and have not only the Old Testament truths, but the New Testament truths, and, and even to understand more about how the church has, has come and more about what had come after these guys had gone on. You, you think about the, what we've seen for the last 2,000 years and how we have seen so many things uh, continue to lead up even in our time, leading up to the end times. We continue to see God at work. And so not only do we have old truths from our own lives, right? I mean, I have old treasures I could share with you from my childhood and from my teenage years and from my 20s and my 30s and, oh goodness, my 40s. And now I continue to have new treasures that I can share. Not something that's newly revealed like it was to them, but something that's new to me that's always been there. But do we think that those things are just for us? Sometimes God does work and share something with you that's just for you. Something that speaks to you specifically. And it may not really have that application to others around you at that time. But then there's other times where God is, I believe God gives us stuff. Holy Spirit leads us and guides us to verses and passages. And it's not just for us to study. It's for us to share with others who need to hear that word of encouragement. That they need to here, as, as we know, iron sharpens iron, and, and that's why we need to understand we have the freedom to share, we have the freedom to encourage one another, and if we're to be like these scribes that are taking the old and new, don't hold it in for yourself. People in our nation have died for us to have the freedom to be able to share without fear of, of punishment from the government. Sadly, I believe that day will come to an end, probably sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, let's take advantage, full advantage of the freedom we have here and share, not our opinions, not our thoughts, but thus saith the Lord, both old treasures and new. God bless you, and I pray have a great, great day.